we want to talk about the Extraordinary Projects Impacting Communities Initiative. And to do that, we have Ms. Cindy Ann Currency and Ms. Nikisha Felix. Ms. Currency is the Operations Manager at Digicel Foundation. And Ms. Felix Lewis is the President of the North Coast Sports Academy. Good morning, ladies, and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. You know, we're going to talk about... We, we have the, the North Coast Sports Academy president here, and we have been doing so well in the Commonwealth Games. How do you feel? All happy and excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's a proud moment for us, Miss yes, it, it is, it is, it is. You can, t you know, do your plug, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're here to talk about the Extraordinary Projects Impacting Communities Initiative. Uh, tell us about that. Okay, so EPIC was launched in 2016, 2000 and, um, 2016 sorry, in March, um, Extraordinary Projects Impacting Communities. It's a small grants program, so community-based organizations can actually apply to Digicel Foundation for a U.S. $5,000 grant, whatever the exchange rate mm -hmm. is at the time. And your project is really to implement indoor, outdoor community um, spaces. Whether you want to develop an after-school program or computer lab, maybe even put in some equipment for a play park, things like that. So we're out there, we're doing a call for applications to let persons know registered community groups, faith-based organizations, NGOs can apply for it. And the projects must be able to be implemented within a six to eight week period, right? But the budget, the cap is 5,000 US. So Nakisha is actually here with me because she was one of mm. our past recipients mm. of the grant. And we have about 40 other community, community groups that have applied mm -hmm. for this grant in the past two years. So this year we have about 25 more grants to issue. So we just want to encourage the public to come out and think about what their community needs are and reach out to Digital Foundation to see if we can partner with them and make it happen. But why this initiative? Why this? Yes. Why not this? So what we're seeing, regardless of what's happening out there in terms of the economy, there is limited funding everywhere, corporate, the corporate sector, public sector. But community groups do not stop sending application forms. They send it all the time, sponsorship letters. So we felt that if we could find a way to meet them on the middle ground where they can get some funding to maybe upgrade a space, then they have the facility to continue doing their volunteer work and mm -hmm. just leverage relationships with other partners to come in and do things for the community. So, epic. Epic. It's very, very <laughs> epic. And, and as you said, Ms. Felix Lewis, you and your organization, your community received funding. Yes. What was it for and how did that go? Okay, well, um, the, we received funding from the Digital Foundation for, um, it's an edible pack on the North Coast. Right, I like your expression. <laughs> <laughs> that was ours too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what is this yeah. now? This sounds exciting. Right, so basically um, our group came up with an idea that we should create a park between Las Cuevas and La Filet where we put within the park vegetables, um, fruit trees, and yes, we'll have some exotic plants and all the other things and create a space for rest and relax on the North Coast. So... Digicel was, <laughs> Cindy was, they were excited about the project. Just like you, they were like, an edible park. And we are thinking that in the time where we are living in now, food is the way to go. So that, that park that you talk about is operational right now? It's, it's um, let's say, 90% operational. Um, we are still um, tidying it a little bit, putting things into perspective. You know, we, um, we have partnered with the regional corporation, Sawa Lavender Regional Corporation, the chairman and our councillor were very excited about the project. And we are just, what the initiative started, started off as, just grew into something bigger. And it's just growing and growing, and that's why the park isn't fully completed yet. <laughs> So when you say edible park, is it that people can stop, relax, and just pick up something in it? <laughs> of course, <laughs> yes. Well, that's the initiative, right? So the initiative is selling food, right? So the idea is about food, right? So you actually get to get, come into the park, you sit to relax because we have put in benches and we're putting in draft boards and things that you can re really rest. And then you're overlooking the ocean, which is so beautiful. And in the park, we have lettuce, cabbage, celery, scythe, thyme. You can bubble a pot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is that once you, um, you, you pick anything within the park, you have to plan something back. So it's a commitment from the users of the park that if you pick anything, you should plan back something. Yeah. But would seeds and things be provided for people to plant something? Well, we are, we are having, our group is having a lot of discussion how we're going to make this yeah. a successful because we know we can't trust everyone to work with seedlings. Come yeah. back plant. <laughs> so we are, we are looking at ideas how we can get people to, as they come and they use the park, replant one time. Uh, that initiative sounds exciting. And North Coast Sports Academy, 
is just one of 40 organizations yes. that has gotten such assistance in two years. Yes. What are some of the other initiatives? Okay, some of the really awesome projects we had coming out of the communities um, would be Tumbasan. It's a village inside of Cora Valley. They applied for the grant through their MP's office. So as Ford, he helped them um, connect with us. And their project was to create a water tank farm. I mean, these projects, these communities know what they want. Uh, and really, actually, that's what they did. They took the funding. They purchased 10,000 gallon water tanks, created a base for it and a very safe structure. And they partnered with Wasa to have the water treated. The tanks are always filled with water so that when there is a shortage in the community, people and the residents have access to portable water. So that was one of the really great projects that we had coming out of last year, um, a water tank farm. Um, Nikisha's project with the lookout was really great as well, because I remember going to meet with the community group, because after you decide visits before, mm -hmm. just to make sure this is a sound <laughs> thing, because Edible Park, we all laughed a little bit. And when yeah. I got there, it was just bush. And she said, do you see my vision? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Yeah, lots of, lots of bush, right? And then to come back a couple of weeks later to see how much work the community had put in it. We have a few community groups that um, reached out that they did um, play parks. They had homework centers, a group in Tobago, Golden Lane Youth Group. They created a youth-friendly space within the community center, but also developed a talk shop so that they can try to use the money to put back into running of the facility. So we've had a lot of great innovations coming out to communities we just want some more um so it's open again for 25 community groups to apply to digital digital foundation the ads are out there you can check our website digitalfoundation.org um, for the application form or email us at digitalfoundationtt at digitalgroup.com so but what would people be sending via the emails what information does digital require okay so first of all you need a registered you have to be a registered community group so you have to show proof of registration um, you need to show us that you've been active as well. So send me minutes, send me um, some listing of your board of directors and a few, an idea of some of the projects that you've done in the past so that we can do our background checks on our end. Have an idea, tell me what the project idea is and a budget, right? Um, the budget cannot go over that 5,000 because you don't want to give somebody funding and then it's not enough to complete their project. You know, it's, it's every sponsor's nightmare. So we work with them where that is concerned. And, and that's really it. The project must be able to be implemented within six to eight weeks. It and that is 5,000 US. 5,000 US. So it's about $33,750. <laughs> ah, sure, sure. We'll that figure out very, very good, you know. But we expect this pro project to continue for how long? Yeah, so it's going to continue for this year, actually. The call for application started on April 8th, and it will go until the 18th of May. Right, and we're going to start reviewing and shortlisting the 20 groups, start doing our site visits. So, you know, just meet the communities and see what their projects are, and then give them the time to implement. And within that, we do the site visits to see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And by March next year, we will close off this year and then start another year again. All right, well, thank you very much, Ms. Cindy and Currency Operations Manager, Digicel Foundation, and Ms. Nikisha Felix Lewis, President, North Coast Sports Academy, and the lady behind the edible park along the <laughs> North Coast Road. An exciting out. initiative, yeah. and we will. And yeah. I'm sure that people will be very interested to go and, and, and see what the edible park is all yes. about. You know, you get nothing better than free food. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see the great race from the, from the spot that they've and, selected. And look at that. Yeah, yeah. So, so you see, uh, yeah. is a, a lot of incentives to, yeah. to, to, to go down there. All right, thank you very much, ladies, thank for joining us on CTV.